Professor Kochlov, uh, recently in the uh, European Parliament, a lot of MEPs who are against investment migration programs, they're against golden visas, they're constitutionally against citizenship by investment. They've been having a lot of discussions and protestations against the industry. Is this a, an existential threat to the investment migration industry? Do they have any legal tools at their disposal to put an end to golden visas and citizenship by investment programs if they wish to do so? Well, first of all, they're in the, min in the minority. So minorities in any parliament, by definition, don't have any legal tools because the arguments they bring uh, in, in substance are not convincing arguments, I find at least, as someone who studied this law for many, many, many years. But more importantly, in fact, the European Parliament simply, just, uh, just as the EU itself, doesn't have any competences in this field that would, uh, that would allow them to intervene into the sovereignty of the member states at, at, at this kind of level. Of course, there are, there are, there are legitimate concerns for, for European uh, lawmakers uh, to, to, be, to, be, uh, to be addressing with, uh, with the citizenship by investment industry. Uh, and those concerns are very clear. Uh, since uh, European citizenship, which is a fundamental status of all the nationals of the member states, according to the Court of Justice, is only given by extension from the nationalities of the member states, uh, we, we face the reality where any nationality of the member state granted by any of the member states of the European Union is automatically a bridge to the, to the fundamental supranational status. So. Uh, I applaud the desire of the institutions to protect the supranational status, uh, which means that uh, this is something that they, they can legitimately be expected to do. Uh, the trouble is I, I disagree with what they're protecting it against, uh, because it's precisely the freedom of the member states to decide who Europeans are, who European citizens are, which is at the core of, of, uh, what, uh, of, of how European federalism is framed. Uh, so by removing that core, we are, speak, we are speaking about a totally different union. It's not the union of sovereign nations anymore, which can decide on who the demoi are and who, who the citizens are supposed to be, but something totally different, the super state. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against uh, some uh, uh, rebranding of the European Union, but I see how plenty of the member states, if not all actually, uh, would be strongly, strongly against this kind of move. Uh, and, and this is because there are huge differences between how uh, citizenships are actually granted from one member state to another. This, uh, this is uh, tailored specifically to accommodate the, specific, the, 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 the concrete conditions on the ground of all the member states, which have different interests, different histories, and different concerns about citizenship. So they take an example of Spain, for instance. Uh, its fundamental concern are the former colonial nationals, or the, for the, the nationals of the former colonial states uh, all around the world. So they, they tailored their citizenship in such a way that someone coming from the Philippines or some, someone coming from Argentina gets strong preferential treatment, uh, which they obviously wouldn't get in Italy or in, or in Estonia. I uh, think about Poland, their concern is cultural. If, if someone is uh, active in the Polish diaspora abroad, even without visiting Poland, without Pol Polish roots, as it were, Polish ancestors, that person still has a chance to get Polish citizenship because Polish culture, Polish language, Polish, uh, Polish, uh, Polish history is something that Poland values more than uh, how, how Spain values colonial connections. Then if we speak about any kind of harmonization, at the European level, uh, then there will be one law on how you acquire your citizenship, no matter what member state we're talking about. Uh, all these differences are bound to disappear. And the disappearance of these fundamental differences means only one thing. It means that the member states are not anymore entitled to shape the peoples they are the custodians of, they're in charge of. And uh, this, uh, this basically uh, ultimately logically results in the death of the member states as we know it. So uh, there can be no serious conversation whatsoever about, about the harmonization of, uh, of uh, the, the rules which would, which would underlie the acquisition of the nationalities of member states under the pretext that those nationalities lead to EU citizenship.